throw our fist at a slapped together Home Depot manger with a plastic baby Jesus in the town square at Christmas time. Is it unconstitutional? Sure. But are we going to persuade our fellow Americans with that? No, we're not. So the symbols, yes, they are meaningful. But these symbols on public ground, though they violate Madison's Constitution, if we're going to reach our fellow Americans and the millions upon millions of secular Americans who are yet to be active, we need to tell the human story of the human harm that results from religious privileging if we're to reach those millions and get them to agree with us and become impassioned about our issues. So we are going to build our business plan, our secular decade strategy, on that foundation of telling those stories, human stories, on a variety of issues. Since I got this job as executive director of Secular Coalition less than two years ago, we went from eight issues on our website to 14. We're telling them more in story form. We're telling them on videos that you can see on YouTube. We're telling more stories about more issues, and we will hit 30 issues on our website by 2013. Why is that important? Because it's not enough to say, I'm mad that there's in God we trust on a coin. It's not going to convince enough people. We need to be able to say, because it's true, that the privileging of religion and law is pervasive and corrosive to this republic. That's why we need those 30 issues on our website. We will deliver them to you, and then you can talk to your neighbors and your friends about these issues and about where we're headed. That's why it's so critically important. If they aren't convinced by issue 8, maybe it'll be 14 or 25, but you'll have many arrows in your quiver to discuss issues on behalf of secular Americans. Next, we are increasing lobbying on your behalf. This shop, Secular Coalition for America, didn't have employees at all about five years ago. Now, in addition to me, I have, we have a six-employee shop. We have a full-time lobbyist who works for me. We're going to increase our lobbying hours over last year by 13%. We are going to hire an additional full-time lobbyist by 2014 to lobby on your behalf. And by 2020, we're going to have multiple full-time lobbyists working on your behalf in Washington. And you might say, oh, geez, that's kind of ambitious. I'll tell you what, you look at a bar graph of the budgets of the religious right organizations in Washington, and we better be ambitious. We better pull together and organize. And I tell you, I am excited about it. I served 10 years in politics. I lobbied for two years for the Bar Association back in my home state. But I have never been prouder to get up in the morning, and it's weird because you say, I'm a lawyer, a politician, and a lobbyist, and I'm happy. <laughs> But, but that I feel like, for me, this is such an exciting mission. Every day, what I do is completely in line with my ideals and with my conscience. And that's an exciting thing. And I thank you to have that opportunity to serve. And that's where we're going to drive during this coming decade. And I'm going to drive this bus and get us there. Next is we are going to be the media's automatic go-to organization when it comes to privileging of religion in public policy in the United States of America. It's critically important that we do this. And you know, this guy right here, whatever you think of him, one thing I admire is consistency in message. And we are going to pound that drum of religious bias in law. We'll see it in our position papers. You'll see it in our lobbying. And you'll see it in our communications message. We're going to get that out, not just among us in our community. We're going to get it out to the average citizen and to the informed citizen in the United States. We're going to make it so that the New York Times reporters and the Washington Post reporters know when an issue along those lines comes up, you call Secular Coalition for America to get a comment on those questions. Next, we broaden and deepen our base. We are the secular coalition for America. In the past, the image to some degree of secular Americans was that circular firing squad. No more. No more. The Secular Coalition for America is 10 member organizations that all join together to say we will unite and we'll unite on this. And how are we going to make it even more successful? This is the biggest thing that you can be involved with to help us move forward and be successful in lobbying. I'll tell you why. Because we're going to create 50 state secular coalitions in this country. 50 of them by the year 2020. And that is so important because we'll have a grassroots, on the ground organization in every single state of the union. And as a politician, I can tell you, I know the magic words. The magic words are, I'm a constituent and I really need your help. 
We need that. Ten years in politics, up in Maine, not in Alabama, I heard from the religious right all the time. They were consistently there in the state legislature working it. In ten years, not one single time did someone come to me and say, I represent any non-theistic organization, not one time. That will change. It will change with this 50 state plan. It is a key component in which you can be directly involved. And it is the single most important thing we can do to be effective as a lobbying group. And it is the single most important thing we can do to grow the membership of our 10 member organizations. Now, why is that? Because our affiliate agreements specifically say that when you form a secular coalition for Pennsylvania, you must go out and survey all the different non-theistic groups around the entire state, work as United Corps has with their kind of community organizing effort to organize statewide, bring people together. There are people who may not go to a meeting where they talk about Darwin uh, versus creationism, or may not be interested in going to a meeting where you, where you debate about whether or not to believe in God. But there are people out there who will add to your numbers, who will say, you know, you're doing social action, you're going to change our government, I'll join, I'll get involved. So it will grow our member organizations, and also it is what politicians care about. What do politicians care about? Two numbers. Numbers of people and numbers of dollars. And we in our movement have not done enough with numbers of people and numbers of dollars. The Secular Coalition for Pennsylvania and the 49 others will be extremely effective in getting this done. That's where we're headed. Next, we are going to broaden and deepen our base. Of course we're doing Facebook. Of course we're doing a new blogging uh, opportunity on our website. We're doing uh, search engine optimization. We're in mutual communication with our base, and we are going to continue to expand that. We're hiring a social media consultant to look at where we're headed so that we have the most cutting edge uh, type of strategies for our organization. Broaden and deepen our base. We're going to preach to the unconverted. You know, I come and I give speeches to these groups, like this one here. I'll continue to do that. But what we're going to do is branch out. This is a picture of when I spoke in TAM in Vegas. There were 1,200 people in the room. When I was at TAM, people said, well, I don't know if we should have you there because you're representing a non-theistic organization and TAM is really about skeptics and we don't know if we want you around and so forth and so on. But when we started to tell stories, when we told stories about the little girl in Alabama who was two years old at a religious child care that was exempt from all the child care laws of the state of Alabama, and she was left alone in a van for two hours and cooked to death for the three-year-old boy in the same state who was left alone in a van in a religious child care for 10 hours, then he died. When we told stories about that, then the people at TAM said, we're on board. We want to get involved. We told stories about Jessica Crank in Tennessee who was in a so-called faith healing home. And when she was 15 years old, she had a tumor growing on her shoulder and it was easily treatable with modern medical science, but her mom didn't believe in modern medical science. Her mom believed in the epistle of James, so the tumor grew to the size of a basketball on this girl's shoulder. I'm not saying figuratively the size of a basketball. I mean literally the size of a basketball on this girl's shoulder. She was in horrible, agonizing pain, and then she died. And the laws of the state of Tennessee, like the laws of over 35 states, provide a special exemption in child protection law that say if you're from a so-called faith healing home, then there's a different standard of child protection that applies. So you actually have a, an imprimatur of law that says that children can be effectively tortured for sometimes months on end and then sometimes die. When we talked to the people in TAM about this, they were ready to get on board and we got significant contributions, in fact, to our organization. We are going to branch out. We're going to speak to the science and tech community. We're going to speak to the lesbian and gay community, African Americans, Latino Americans, women's rights activists, lawyers, civil libertarians, the science fiction community. We're going to get out there and talk to whoever has some similar set of interests with us and get our voice out there so that we can make this pie bigger. That's how we're going to get this done. Next, non-theistic electioneering. The religious right is deeply involved, passionate, and committed. And I'm not talking about illegally from the pulpit. I'm talking about perfectly legal. They make political action committees that are perfectly legal, and they spend millions. We have to do that. We have to get organized, and Secular Coalition for America is going to help create those efforts. You know, it was 
I consider a noble thing to say if you were involved in gay rights advocacy in the 1980s, or to say you were involved in civil rights advocacy in the 1950s. And we should have great pride in where we are right now. We can be at the cusp of history. We can be at the turning point. We're not where we need to be yet, but I'm very proud of being involved in this journey, and political involvement is critically important to that. Another form of uh, critically important political involvement and another part of our strategic plan is the 10 by 20 commitment. That is that we will have 10 openly non-theistic members of Congress by the year 2020. There you see Pete Stark. Pete Stark, the one openly non-theistic member of Congress with our board president, our Herb Silverman. He's one, and he's a good man who's 78 years old. We need to work on this. I know people in Congress now we know people in Congress now, 25 in fact, who are non-theistic but are not open about it. How are we going to succeed? I tell you how we're going to succeed with this. We're going to build relationships with elected officials and we're not going to out them. We're going to talk with them and we're going to get to that point where they say, oh yes, like Pete Stark, I am comfortable doing something that will help my society by speaking out about who I am. A second way we're going to do this is with new people. This is State Senator Kirsten Cinema. She was selected by Time Magazine as one of the 40 under 40, one of the 40 prominent and up-and-coming elected officials under the age of 40 in the United States. When we kicked off the first state secular coalition, the Secular Coalition for Arizona, in October, State Senator Kirsten Cinema attended and spoke at our event. She identifies as a secular American. She is young enough. She's interesting enough, she's well organized enough, so she has potential where she could be someone who could be a credible member of the United States Congress. So we're going to build with the current members and we're going to build with new folks to have that voice, an equal voice. We work very well with people who are religious in Congress and always will. But just as it's very appropriate that there are Jewish Americans in Congress, it should be equally appropriate that there are non-theistic, openly non-theistic members of the United States Congress, and part of our business plan is to get us there. Strategy three is strengthening our coalition. All of our 10-member organizations, like Fred Edwards was talking about the American Humanist Association, they are one of our 10-member organizations. We are knitting together these organizations, so no longer is it the circular firing squad. It is, in fact, an organized entrepreneurial movement. That is what the Secular Coalition for America is all about. Next is the innovation culture, which is critically important to me. This is one of my favorite books here. It's called Pastorpreneur. You may have not heard of it, but it is a big seller. I mean a very big seller. If you go into most of your Walmarts, you'll see it. Sam's Club. It is a big, big seller, and I respect it. Pastorpreneur in Bangor. When I was in politics in Bangor, you know what I saw? I'd walk around. I campaigned. I campaigned on Sunday mornings, you know, and I'd walk around. I did this over the course of 10 years, and you know what I'd see? Well, you know, my, my ethnic heritage is Irish Catholic, and we had a beautiful uh, big church in, in Bangor, Maine. Emptier and emptier at the Catholic Church in Bangor, Maine. The old mainline Protestant churches, the old what you call liberal Protestant churches, fewer and fewer people. Jewish congregations, fewer and fewer people. But you know who held their own? The big box fundamentalist churches, they held their own, and I respect them. They were out there, they were clean cut, they were working the crowd, they were presenting a friendly face. They got out there and they got their job done. They treated it in an entrepreneurial fashion. And that is what the Secular Coalition for America is going to do, but we're going to do it better. We're going to do it on a reason-based analysis. We just held our summit and it went tremendously well with a diverse group of dynamic new leadership for our movement. That's what this is critically about. And dealing with big and meaty issues. It's fun to make fun of people about the end of the world or whatever it was, because that was the same weekend as our summit. But that is the silly stuff that they do. We talk about public policy. We talk about protecting that little girl who died in that van in Alabama. We talk about Jessica Crank, who died at age 15 because of religious bias and law. We talk about real people being harmed. And if they want to talk about National Day of Prayer, if they want to talk about those things, we say, well, there you go, grandstanding again. We're going to go back to the real issues that affect real people. That's our strategy, and that's how we're going to succeed. And with this summit, we got 
excellent ideas, business-like ideas to move our projects forward. And we're going to be rolling